Now there are two cars in the lead lap. Bill Elliott, you see there the uh, third car in line behind Jeff Bodine is in fifth place. He is two laps down. Bodine, two wins this year, coming at Pocono in Michigan. Trying to pick up his third win in 1994. Good battle between Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon right behind Bill Elliott. They're running side by side for the sixth position. Mark Martin trying to take it away. He does going down into turn one. Well, he almost had it. Now he has it. Martin said that is sixth spot. Sixth and seventh right there on your screen. And not too far ahead of them is Bill Elliott. And he's in the same lap they are. That is two laps down to the leader. Once again, Jeff Bodine is our leader. Only two cars in the lead left, Bodine and Terry Labonte, who is directly in front of Bodine. There is Labonte, left side of your screen at Bodine. Lowest starting spot of the Tyson Holly Farms 400 winner previously, 16th. Dale Earnhardt back in 1991. And Bodine in the car number seven started 18th today. But boy, has he had a dominant afternoon here on the 5 8 mile short track at North Wilkesboro Speedway. Back with the closing laps of the Tyson Holly Farmers 400 right after this. Back at North Wilkesboro Speedway as laps are widening down. Our leader is Jeff Bodine, the car number seven, right side of your screen. X side four. Now coming up later today, senior PGA Tour, the Vantage Championship from Tanglewood Country Club in Clemens, North Carolina. It's just about uh, 30 minutes from here. That's live at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. Playing partners Jim Dent and Larry Gilbert shot identical 66s yesterday and were tied for the lead with two-stroke advantage over Ray Floyd, Bob Charles, and others. Lee Trevino, some seven strokes back. Final round coming up at 4.30 this afternoon. Battle here back for fifth position. Mark Martin moving up on Bill Elliott. Bill Elliott currently has the fifth position, but Mark has moved in closer and closer on the Budweiser Ford. You're seeing exactly what Mark Martin is seeing, that big bud right in front of him. Once again, we'll watch the RPMs, 8,300. Watch the pack as he goes up, up, up. The range is about from 4,900 to about 88. Right now, until the floor speedy gets down to a 69 miles an hour, up to about 120 miles an hour, a little over 120, 124. While we're watching this, Jeff Bodine has just went around Terry Labonte and put him a lap down once again. So now Jeff Bodine is the only car on the lead lap. There are three cars that are a lap down. Terry Labonte, of course, the car in second spot. The car number one of Rick Mast. Good run from Aston third and Rusty Wallace in fourth. Those three cars are a lap down. Other results around the country. NASCAR racing action. Whoa, before you do that, uh, here's a result of contact with apparently the concrete. Possibly a cut tire on the Ward Burton Hardy Chevrolet. Right front tire flat on that car. As he drags the racetrack trying to get back to the pits and looks like he is going to make it and the caution flag will not come out. Other results around the country in NASCAR action this weekend. Yesterday, our last out at Hickory Speedway, Ernest Winslow, the winner down there. Will Hobgood finishes second, Junior Miller third, and Will Hobgood becomes the 1994 Goodies Dash Series National Champion. Congratulations to Will Hobgood. Stock car racing, South Boston Speedway, South Boston, Virginia. Wayne Patterson, Stacey Compton, Richard Lambert. Stacey Compton wins the track championship. Late model stock car action here yesterday. Mike Dillon, son-in-law of Richard Childress, finishes at the top of the pack. Scott Kilby, Dennis Setzer finishing second and third here in the Lowe's 150. And Dale Jarrett didn't do too good. He didn't make the field here for this race, but Jason Jarrett held up the Jarrett family, but he won last night at Hickory in the Limited Sportsman and won Rookie of the Year honors. Congratulations to Jason Jarrett. 
Well, we'll be back with about 10 laps to go and see if Jeff Bodine can hang on. Back in a moment. Caution flag being shown for the fourth time a day, and Michael Waltrip just gets his car looped out in front of Kenny Schrader and Darrell Waltrip, who are racing back to the caution flag here on lap 392. Apparently some contact, and uh, I think Michael had a little bit of help up there between turns three and four. Yeah, John Andretti in the Richter Petty STP Pontiac got into the left rear quarter panel of this Pennzoil Pontiac, and Michael's going to come up there and talk to him back a little bit. going to restart this race pretty quickly but uh, Michael comes up to, to let him know that and Michael has a left rear tire flat on that car. He sure does. Come in. And while we looked at Pencil Pontiac we mentioned that Harry Gant Day the Parade and everything have been canceled tomorrow but that ball game on Tuesday night for Mark Hayes who's a member of Michael Waltrip's crew who has cancer is still going on at Frank Lisky Park Concord Concord North Carolina right between 29 and 49. And here comes the uh, Penzo Pontiac down pit road. Mark Hayes, of course, is part, part of that Bahari crew. They will change both right and left side tires. Mark is here today. Mark Hayes is in the pits. Uh, they're going to have to pick that car up on the left side because that tire was flat over there. Safety car has the field very, very slow. They will get the green flag next time by. It will be seven laps to go. Single file restart, under 10 laps. Single file restart. Good point, Ned. That's exactly right. It's not a double file restart. <laughs> and these guys are certainly not accustomed to that. Okay, Yellow's back out. This lap. They're trying to get apparently some of the cars in position. So you see Doyle Ford there waving, waving off the restart as they're trying to get some of these cars in position for the single file restart. Well, now they give them one lap to go this time around. And, and what they were trying to do, they just didn't remember that they all, they're accustomed to a double file restart, so they were going to run up there and do it. But under 10 laps, that is the new NASCAR rule. And while we're under caution, take a look at our field summary where your favorite driver is running with just a few laps remaining. Jeff Bodine, Terry Labonte. I thought Rusty Wallace being a lap down could pull up right on the back bumper of Rick Mast under those rules. He can't do that? I thought all the cars one lap down could run nose to tail. Or is it just a lead lap? I guess it's just think, a lead. I think it's okay. just a lead lap. It's yeah. just a lead lap cars and all the other cars got to follow single file in wherever they follow. Okay. Yeah. Now I understand the rule. Thank you very much, man. Okay, so we get set for a restart. It'll be six laps to go. And the battle is going to be for second spot. 5-1. 6 and 11 as restart lap 395. There's a real battle. The 6 and 11 are a couple laps down. They are battling for position. Yes, they are. Position. But, uh, these guys, the 5 and the 1, are battling for second spot. Exactly. Let me tell you that Dale Earnhardt got by Jeff Gordon, and that helps in the point battle because he gets three extra points. In fact, he's picked up that four, four extra That's points. right, four points. In fact, he's picked up that spot. There he is in front of Jeff Gordon. That puts him now in seventh position. He's still two laps down, but now in seventh spot behind Bill Elliott and Mark Martin, who are sixth and fifth, also two laps down. Three laps to go for our leader, Jeff Bodine. There's Earnhardt now showing back in seventh spot. Eight. And Ricky Rudd up there trying to pass Earnhardt, and indeed did pass him. He didn't know for what may he might have been racing him for position, but Ricky is being shown three laps down. Well, I think Ricky position. wants to get to the 16 car right okay. in front of him because they're racing for position. They indeed are, and Ricky's getting up beside us going into turn one. And that would be for 10th tenth, uh, tenth position, I believe it is here. 10th spot. There's our leader who would come by for the white flag. This time out of turn four, Jeff Bodine trying to pick up his third victory in 1994. Final lap. In a lap to himself, the battle will be for second spot as Rick Mass now pulls to within two car lengths of Terry Labonte in the back straight. There's Bodine, there on the right side of your screen is the battle for second position. Road 
Jeff Bonai takes the win. And Rick Mass nearly catches the concrete. And we still have a couple of cars uh, bumping and banging here on the final lap. And Jeff Bonai waving to the crowd. His third win in 1994 in the Exide Batteries for Thunderbird. We'll hear from the winner when we come back to the Brooksboro Speedway right after this. Television, are you out of here? Back at the Wilkesboro Speedway, Morning. Jeff Bodine has made the ride atop the infield media center and gets himself all gussied up for victory lane. I can't believe this printing. Let's listen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he didn't need that battery today. He was charged all afternoon. <laughs> Let's go down to John Kernan. John? Well, Jeff Bodine, do the words dominating performance mean anything to you today? You know, I've had good cars in my life. Come here, Bows. <laughs> I've had good cars. Paul, come on in here. But this is the best. Uh, and this crew, yeah, I got to apologize for last week. Same car. We could have done the same thing last week. I messed up. We did it today, though. This XI Ford was just flying. Hoosiers, hey, they're here to stay, aren't they? Hey, this guy was the greatest, the greatest guy in the world. Matt Barry, I love you guys. You're back home. You said last week you had the same car. You could have done this at Martinsville. What did you figure out between Martinsville and here? Same car, same everything. I just didn't make a mistake today. Last week we, we had a flat tire and it messed the car up and that ruined our day. Today everything went good. We got a few bumps and scratches here, but uh, this thing was awesome out there. A lot of fun for us uh, race fans. It got pretty wild there on some of those restarts, but a good race. Uh, it proved the Hoosiers are tough on the short tracks. We wanted to do that. Again, uh, a friend of ours died here a little, a little while ago, Mike Dupas. And Mike, hey, we know you're watching. This one's for you. Okay, Jeff, let me ask you one more thing. You are talking about some wild moments on the restarts. Wild moment for you when Rusty was racing you back, trying to get his lap back. Well, he's trying to get his lap back. That's what the people like to see. That's what he's supposed to do. I did what I was supposed to do. I kept him back there. Well, Jeff O'Dine with a dominating performance. Let's go to the garage area where Bill Weber is standing by. With the defending Winston Cup champion, Dale, 208 points after this one. Obviously a long day, but you accomplished what your ultimate goal is. Well, when you get a chance to direct a race like we did today in TV, and then you, and it don't come out like you wanted to direct it, uh, you know, that's the way it goes. But still, you know, we ended up seventh after I got into the 40 car. I, I broke loose and got into him and caused that melee up there and got into the wall myself. But we came back and ended up seventh, so... I'll take it, Hick. <laughs> You've had a love-hate relationship with Charlotte. That's Is that the big hurdle for you, Dale, to get through there? I think we'll be okay at Charlotte. we got a good race car for there, and we're looking forward to being there. Good Dale? Up at Wilsborough. Dale Earnhardt. Fade to black. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. We're not oh, quite done not yet. yet. Now, Dale Earnhardt was in our truck and directed the opening of the telecast. Uh, brought us on the air and went, boy, that's great when a six-time Winston Cup champion does that for you, Dale. Thanks a lot. As he comes home today in seventh spot. Back with more in just a moment. Well, the crowd falling out here at North Wilkesboro. Now, this is decision time. It's a critical time of the year when decisions have to be made with regard to silly season. Who's going where and with what sponsor? I felt like that today's race was very important. I think Charlotte rocking all the remaining races of the year, very, very critical to a lot of team success and future and a lot of drivers' uh, success and future. Here's cars that are without confirmed driver or sponsor in 95. Some of them have a sponsor, they don't have a driver. Some of them has a driver, no sponsor. And look at these guys, Ned. There's a big list of them there. Some of them will be announced perhaps next week. We've heard rumors of that. Maybe Junior Johnson will make an announcement uh, this coming week, but uh, still a lot of things to be settled as far as who will be where in 1995. And look at this list of drivers that really, without a confirmed ride for 1995, something we haven't been, they haven't told us if they've got a ride. Lake Speed, Jeff Green, Hus Trick, and Phil Parsons, Bobby Hill, and Rich Bickle, Brett Bodine, Jimmy Spencer, Bobby Labonte, Chuck Bound, Jimmy Hensley, Joe Nemechek, Wally Dollenbach, John Andretti, and Jeff Purvis. Man. Now, some of these drivers have options. They just maybe haven't made up their mind or haven't announced their decisions yet. But uh, we'll find out probably in the next 10 days as silly season gets in high gear. Back with more from North Wilkesboro Speedway right after this. Stay with us. <laughs> 